Hey, I am back with a new video and I am now the proud owner of five Tarot Mania decks. These are decks by Eugene Vinitsky and Elsa Kapatakowski. I love this de these decks. I think this is my most used precious deck. Uh, the small one doesn't come with a guidebook, but the big one does. It comes with a separate guidebook, so this is my treasure. I should buy a backup, I think, because this is absolutely gorgeous. Then I bought the Kabbalistic Tarot 5781. And this has a guidebook that fits into the box. I don't use this deck. I am here to review the Alma Latina, but it's still in order and I can't rehome it. It's just too... The way these slides, these cards are absolutely amazing. Um, can't rehome it, don't use it, but love it. That's this deck. And I bought the Madhouse Tarot that also comes with a separate guidebook. This is amazing. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's sensitive, it's elegant, it's cruel, it's rude, it's rough, it's amazing. Then I had this one and this one delivered to me yesterday. I'm going to review this one tomorrow, so if you're interested, stay tuned. We are here for the Tarot Alma Latina by Eugene Vinitsky and Elsa Kapatakowski. Um, this is a beautiful box, but it came with a little bit of a dent. So maybe that happens during transportation, shipping to the Netherlands from France. Um, Eugene Vinitsky is very approachable and very open to suggestions and you know he really does a great job helping me out. I assume that he helps others out too. This is uh, a picture of the creators and the introduction is by the way beautiful. I will get into that in just a bit. It has a magnet on the side and this is copy number 154 so let's put this one away and the package was uh, well wrapped and protected and the packaging was great so I was a little bit worried about that so let's take another look at the box I love boxes. I will never put my cards in a pouch or a bag or in a envelope or whatever. And these are the cards. And the way these slides are, wow. You know, this is amazing. Uh, look how beautiful, look how great, how uh, gilded bags. And here is the fool. A man in sheep clothing or wolf clothing. Let's just enjoy what's going on here. There's a little bit of gold on the sides and the top. So this is the fool. And this is the magician. I love the cubistic backgrounds especially present in the backgrounds i really like that here you can see a little bit more there's a little bit of a shine and a shimmer so i don't mind that at all high priestess the empress let's focus so the way this is done the dress is gorgeous there is something wrong with their boobs but uh, the fruit is amazing. Emperor. And the Hierophants. Lovers. You know these lines are perfect. There is another deck that is all about cubism, cubistic art. And now I forgot the name, senior moments. I have senior moments 
a lot these days. It's like the cold freezes my brain. The reflection in the water is delightful. And I found that this was the most colorful, enchanting deck that I could find. And I had to have it. And I was resisting because, you know, uh, indie decks are quite expensive, but sometimes it's so worth it, you know, to buy a good deck. Justice. And there is Tiara. Tiara Libertad. These lines, this is so beautiful. The death card. Temperance. Devil, look at that eye. Glowing. My camera is leaving. It's being a little bit weird. Tower. Star. Moon, sun, the art style is, and this is a funny detail in the card, crocodile, ace of wands, this is so amazing. These are cards are so strong. It's totally different vibe than the Madhouse Tarot. Every deck is unique. Every deck is different. I like the lack of consistency in their creations. It's not like if you have one deck, you've seen them all. They're all unique and different. Six of Wands. This line makes it extra beautiful and I am paying a lot of attention to details and backgrounds and it's a whole crowd. Nine of Wands. Ten. Page. I'm, so in, I'm going to be so careful with this deck. I'm not going to riffle it or shuffle it very roughly. The art is stunning. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. I have to admit, I have to be honest, but you know... I can get used to this. And it's not that I'm not going to use this deck. You know, some decks are just so pretty. You don't want to touch them or handle them. <clears throat> but this is a deck that is so charming and so special. And yet, you know, you want to use this deck. I want to use this deck. Here, the blues and the greens. Nine of Cups. This is out of this world. Page of Cups with the rain. The way the mountains are, you know, and there's a little bit of a lake or something. The structure of this is so cool. Look at the background. You know, you can't... You don't want to miss the background. You know, everything is about, you know, the character in the, uh, in the front. But this is absolute beauty. Four swords. Six of Swords. Look at this. I 
I literally can't find the right words. Edelsword, this is so cool. So here we have the Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords. There's a little bit of a human sacrifice going on. The fox here is the purples and greens are so amazing. So here we have Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords, the King of Swords, the Queens. We have the infinity symbol here, where he's juggling the coins. Look at this. Five of coins. This is so cool. Six of coins with a pile of gold on the on floor, on the ground. And it still is right away Smith based, so this should be easy to read. Eight of coins, nine, the face of this man, nine of coins, ten of coins. Ooh, they are slippery, they are slippery. Um, here we go, page. With a leopard in the background. I like these cards. You know, they wore my heart, they wore my soul. They are absolutely amazing. And if you are interested, I'm going to read something from the guidebook now, going through each card at a time. Are you ready when taking this new Alma Latina tarot deck in your hands to set off for a thrilling journey about the mysterious parallel worlds of the Mesoamerica? When you have this amazing bright and dramatic de hands in your deck in your hands, you will immediately realize what wealth of cultural symbolics and magic power is concentrated in it. You will be shrouded. You will be shrouded in the enchanting atmosphere of mystery contained in it and instantly captivated by its fiery temperament. It is fiery. It's warm, it's cozy, it's sunny, it's vibrant. An amazing, not yet completely explored ancient civilization steeped in legends about the cosmos, about ceremonial magic, gold, and the struggle for freedom. This is what the images on each card will tell you about. In its images, you will see a paradoxal encounter of all kinds of world cultures merging with the richest culture of the Mayans, the Incas, and the Aztecs, which results in a unique blend of seemingly incompatible religions and world outlook, sorcery, and ideological aspirations. This is the 19th deck I have made, and it's among the most complicated ones by the iconographic material and the performance. I was captivated with the process, often stopped, this work with was anything but easy, but it didn't let me go, forcing me to come back to it again and again, like an irresistible, like an irresistible feeling. Its characters came into my dreams, making my tackle this material over and over again. The work took as long as five years. We did our best to fill it with the brightness and ultimatism of colors and traditions of the South American visual art and spiritual practices. Why did our team have a desire to create such a deck? Well, because tarot is a tool that can reflect in as few as 78 miniatures, the entire microcosm as a small projection of the great cosmos. The latter in its turn consists of a number of small, small worlds existing in the parallel. Each card shows a small world and it's nothing else but the magic in the mysterious Olmec civilization inherited by all the Mesoamerican nations that leads us to understand this phenomenon. The Indians' magic world are like quantum transitions from one state into another, from one energy level to another, both to the higher levels of gods and spirits and the micro worlds of the space around us. These are special shamanic paths requiring special states of mind and a huge level of energy to reach them. And now imagine that you have set off 
for a most fascinating journey in search of an extraordinary impression, wealth or knowledge, perhaps your galleon has cast anchor in one of the bays of the Yucatan Peninsula, and you need to step on to a totally unfamiliar totally unfamiliar shore with all its treasures and lurking dangers. On or your route lies through the Mexican chaparral and there is a coyote running towards you. It hides in the brush and suddenly an old Indian walks out of there puffing a long pipe, his face carved with deep wrinkles like an ancient cliff and heads towards you. As you look into his eyes and you see the boundless space in them and sinking into them, suddenly you'll find it yourself in a different world, the existence of which you have never suspected. What is more congenial for you, discovering new starting points in yourself, searching for spiritual values, the American Indian gods, the cult of Santa Muerte, or the magic of the four winds, the voladors. You will determine it for yourself after getting familiar with the Alma Latina tarot deck. But one thing is certain, it contains everything you need to get to know yourself and the versatility of the world around you expressed in an absolutely unique language. In this deck, its creators do not claim the full historical and ethnographic authenticity of the events, scenes and characters reflected in it, but we have tried to put in the image and description of the card something that touches the heart, attracts attention, awakens the mind and fascinates with its unknown and mysterious depth. So that's a little bit of the introduction. And like I said, it's just... It's just gorgeous. It's unworldly. It's amazing. It's, you know, the way this looks, this is fantastic. Okay, bye.